I'm Sandy, and I'm the minister for this morning. And we're going to be talking about compassionate communication. So this is not actually the month of compassion. This is the month of honesty. But we'll also talk about honest communication, which is compassionate in its own way. So So we're going to sing a little chant. Um, I'll just lead it a cappello. And this chant actually came from a Sai Baba um, songbook. And um, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, loving is, living is forgiving. So I'll, I'll sing a couple stanzas and then you can sing after me. And we'll go through it twice. Giving and forgiving, giving only love. Giving and forgiving, giving only love. Loving all the living, living only love. Loving all the living, living only love. Giving and forgiving. Giving only love. Giving and forgiving. Giving only love. Loving all the living. Living only love. Loving all the living. Living only love. Giving and forgiving. Giving only love. Giving and forgiving. Giving only love. Loving all the living. Living only love. Loving all the living. Living only love. Giving and forgiving. Giving only love. Giving and forgiving. Giving only love. Loving all the living. Living only love. Loving all the living. Living only love. I thought this chant is the essence of my talk today because really compassionate communication is all about communicating our love both to each other and to divine spirit which is very important. To me, the most important three words in the world are, I love you. And we can say that in so many ways, but the words are precious. And sometimes we long to hear those words very deeply, and sometimes it's hard to say them out loud. We communicate them in other ways. But actually saying I love you is a precious statement. I, I feel that towards all of you, towards humanity, and towards this beautiful world that we live in. And I hope and pray that I communicate it well. <laughs> but there's, there's many different ways to communicate that. You know, they talk about our love language. And there's a lot of things included in that, and a lot of different words like, I appreciate you, or I've missed you, and different things that say that. And uh, everyone has their own way of expressing that. I think um, it's precious, the different forms of communication. And uh, my sweet husband, Steve, communicates a lot through service. 
which is a precious communication and service. So being helpful to each other and giving heartfelt gifts to each other, that's something that I love to do. That's, to me, it's a meaningful way to communicate my love and to share my heart with people. But there's many, many ways to communicate that. And Divine Spirit speaks through all of us in our own special voices and acts and serves and helps through all of us. And all of them are valid, all of them are precious. There's actually a couple different um, forms of communication called compassionate communication. And I'm going to talk about, they're kind of different, but they're both wonderful. So I will talk about both of them. One of them is what's most popular as NVC, that's how it's known, which means nonviolent communication. And the other title is compassionate communication. And that's actually a, a formal technique that Marshall Rosenberg came up with that is really powerful and very effective. And I've embraced it for many years, though I'm not always perfect at it. But I promise you, we've had some wonderful victories with that technique and um, some great breakthroughs in our relationship and um, within my friendships with people and in important conversations, very important conversations. So I'll talk a little bit about that. There's four steps to that. The first one is very simple. And a lot of times this is used when there is a conflict to resolve. But you can also use it just to communicate your love in whatever way you feel like you need to. But the observation, the beginning, is something very simple and factual, where we don't use any adjectives or any judgments to describe uh, the circumstances or something that happened. We just, it's like, give me the facts, ma'am, only the facts. (laughs) And it really works because it's simple and sweet, and non-judgmental. So just saying the facts of what happened from your perspective can actually help enlighten the other person to the situation because they don't always know the truth of what happened. But then after that comes from the heart, the feelings. And the feelings are something that we own that we describe that come from our own inner recesses that are more an emotion, like, I feel sad, I feel happy, um, I feel lonely. Something that we can take full responsibility for and it does not make blame or accusation towards anyone else, even a circumstance in our lives. So, after the feelings, then we voice our need. And our need are the basic human needs. I mean, obviously, for shelter and for, you know, food and things that we physically need, but also, in order to thrive, There's a lot of emotional needs that we really, really live with as important parts of our lives, which is love, affection, validation, listening. I know that's really important part of communication, and it's important to each of us to feel heard, to feel like people care what we have to say, and they actually perk up their ears when we speak. 
And sometimes, which sounds different, we need space. I know my son, when he became a teenager, he'd stay up late nights. And I go to bed early and get up early, so come nine o'clock in the morning, I'd go bouncing into his room and say, good morning, hi, let me tell you about what happened last night, or I got to tell you about this. And he's like, mom, get out of here. I'm like, no, don't say it like that, you know. So I said, what do you need? He said, I need some space. So I convinced him to say, Mom, may I please have some space? And (laughs) he said that a lot. (laughs) For a long time. And (laughs) finally, it kind of got abbreviated into please. Oh, darn. (laughs) Okay. So I would leave him with his privacy. But still to this day, his four-year-old daughter, when she's tantruming and she feels like she needs space, we, the two of us both, have trained her to say, (laughs) may I have some space? And it works. It's a really precious way, uh, other than many, many alternatives. But that is a respectful and sweet way to say that. But anyways, out of the need, we make a request. And the request needs to be a positive statement. As we don't necessarily want to tell somebody to leave or to you know, stop doing what they're doing, and we don't even need to address the behavior and the request, we can just say, could I please have, and whatever you need, love, listening, um, respect. I know for my husband, um, he and my son used to go at it sometimes, and my son was little and kind of wild, and he would call Steve, names. Steve didn't like that at all. (laughs) He would get pretty upset about it. (laughs) But I remember coming into those conversations and I would say, how do you feel? And he's like, upset. And I'd say, well, what do you need? And he'd say, respect. (laughs) And, And he got it. And, you know, he would make the request, you know, please speak to me respectfully and call me positive things. You know, we, we kind of turned it towards the good. And it really changed the day. It, it changed our whole form of communication. Thank, thank goodness. That was a blessing. <laughs> so. And I've used that many years through many upsets and many, many um, breakdowns or challenges. And if you actually do follow this formula, it's magic. It absolutely works. You know, I've had people um, thank me and just say, wow, I could tell that you were upset about this, but you were nice, you know, because I went by the formula and it really does work. Because <laughs> basically you're, you're sticking to your feelings about what you need and you're asking for what you really want. It's the other thing. It could be what you, what you need or what you want. But that, that request is really important. And they say making the request for what you need is the difference between being sort of not seen and being assertive. And we all need to speak up for our, our needs. And I know women are famous for not speaking up. And I hope that this little communication will help give you a voice. We need that voice. We all need to be heard. Anyway, so the other technique that's kind of similar to this 
that people sometimes call compassionate communication. It came from many, many years ago. They say that the Buddha came up with it originally, but several other beings and organizations have been credited to it too. But anyways, this starts out with some very simple questions. Before we speak up, we say, we ask ourselves, is it true? And a lot of times, it's like that, that phone conversation game, the grapevine. A lot of times, somebody told somebody that told somebody, and it totally changes over just two or three conversations. And by the third or fourth party, it's actually not true. So we need to trace our resources. You know, who told me this or where did this come from? And find out the origin of it. And really, if we're going to share it with somebody, make sure that it really is true. And also, the next question is, is it necessary? So the silence is golden, silence is precious. And if the silence is beautiful between two people, many words can go unspoken. But sometimes you kind of have to go through an awkward period when you're with someone, and you think, oh, well, we should be having a lovely conversation because we're sitting together. But the truth is, you can have a lovely silence together. Let me tell you, it took me a long time to learn that. But um, learning it has been wonderful. And there's been a lot of sweet moments when I wasn't speaking and I was glad. I had a wonderful friend that I used to hike with and run with and swim with. We would exercise together. And we would do these beautiful hikes in the morning, and we'd start out all bouncy and conversational and, you know, sharing about our day and just sharing what was happening for us. And then after a while, a lot of times we would lapse into silence. And at first I kind of thought, oh, I should keep talking, but then I realized, well, we're really good friends so we can share the silence together. And we did. And a lot of times, after we'd been silent for a while, she would burst out singing. And her voice was beautiful. So So that was sort of a blessing that came out of silence. And many other blessings have come from it, too. Oh, I remember Mahashaya, I've read that he would speak to his devotees and his students through the silence in the depth of meditation. His voice would be heard, but it was more energetic or feeling level that he would be sharing his spirit with people rather than his words. That goes a level deeper. But, um, and the third part of that technique, the question is, is it kind? So kindness is definitely necessary in this world. We all love when people are kind to us, and we actually, in our heart of hearts, we love being kind to other people, always. Even if it's hard, even if we have to do forgiveness, it's 100% worth it. And forgiveness springs forth from compassion, which comes from love. So if we generate love for all beings, we can also generate compassion and forgiveness. 
but sometimes it takes some time. And for myself, I know, I make affirmations, like I say, I forgive so-and-so, or I release so-and-so. I love anyone that I'm upset with. I'll say those for them in my mind, and sometimes even out loud, or I'll write it down. The spoken word and the written word both have a phenomenal amount of power. Thought has power, too, that can be transferred. But when you make it into a conversation or an announcement to God, God listens. And other people listen, too. Even if they're not in the room and we say something about them, they still hear us. They hear like with their feeling nature or with their inner ear. You know that saying, my ears have been burning? Well, when we talk about other people, their ears do burn and their ears hear what we're saying, even if they don't remember exactly what you said. They, they catch the drift of your conversation and they react. And that happens to me so many times. I'll be thinking something about someone. And this can go to the positive, thank goodness, that if I'm thinking about how much I love someone or if I'm seeing the good in that person in my mind's eye, the next time I see them, it feels so great. It's like they're responding to my love or my admiration. It's like they really understand what I was thinking or feeling towards them. Also, a wonderful technique that's similar to this is I ask my Christ self or my higher nature to communicate to the other person's Christ self or higher nature. And that works beautifully. It's amazing. (laughs) And I remember one time I was having a misunderstanding with someone and I asked, you know, if my Christ self could communicate to her Christ self. And I just said a little prayer that that would happen. And it did. I could feel it. And this person is a really great meditator and very sensitive to other people's vibes. And the next time I saw her, we both went running up to each other with our arms outstretched. (laughs) I was like, Sandy! (laughs) And we hugged. We were so happy to see her. Because our Christ selves had communicated with each other, our love, that was the essence of the conversation, and our respect for one another. So there's a lot of different ways to send our love. And all of them are valid. So we're going to have about a 15 or 20 minute silent meditation. And I'll say a little prayer and you guys can follow after me if you like. And then April will do the bowls. So that will lead us. Living Spirit... Thank you for the love that you communicate to us so beautifully. Thank you for the joy that sings in our hearts. Thank you for the reign of heaven, your living light that showers upon us day by day, moment by moment.
One way that we can express our love for God is by forgiving anyone and everyone who has ever hurt us. For most of us, there are many grievances to forgive. And we need to give them all to the light. To transmit our love and transmute our pain. I know that primary relationships tend to have a lot of magnetic energy, but we need someone, we love them, and yet we have a lot of challenges with them. That starts out in the beginning. with our parents. And I am one of many who had some real challenges with my parents, and I love them. But I had some upsets. And... uh, I really wanted to forgive. So I learned this technique where you imagine the person in your presence and you talk to them. You tell them how you feel. And you tell them what they did and how it affected you. So forgiveness is a work and a very worthy one and it can change our lives and change the lives of those that we love that we're willing to forgive. A lot of people say that we don't need to forgive for them. We need to forgive for our own sake so that we can live in peace and so that we can sleep at night. (laughs) I think that's true, but I also feel like it helps everyone. As a planet, every drop of love that we put into the planetary consciousness is a powerful one. And it makes ripples all through humanity. Every forgiveness is a victory for ourselves and for humankind. So it's worth it. (laughs) I include that into the concept of compassionate communication. It's a compassionate life. that love is the mother of all virtue. When Norm used to talk about the virtues to explain them, almost every virtue, he said, this virtue is birthed out of love. And I basically feel like goodness is birthed out of love. So, I hope everyone is feeling the essence of love 
and forgiveness. I'm going to say a closing prayer, and then we'll have some songs. And uh, I would love it if you would repeat after me. Divine Spirit, We love you. And we love each other. Let us express our love in the best of all ways. Through your heart. Through your joy, through your your light, through your your giving nature, and through forgiveness. Oh
call out to Thee, my Lord, I pray to Thee. Give me strength and grant me grace and wisdom that I might see You within me. to see your face. I want to hear your voice. I want to feel your touch. Help me to share your love. Help me to share your